Yes. Yes. Hello, welcome. Come uh, welcome uh, thank you for joining. Yes. You know, who are you? I'm Max Rempel. Good name. What do you wish? Um it's a pleasure to meet you in uh, in that form. How is life out there? Yes, I'm I'm not a good uh, speaker sometimes. But We'll make an exception. <laughs> How is uh, so? You were pretty spiritual in your life, but when you came out in the spiritual world, what did you discover? How how much different it was? The spiritual work is part of everything that exists. So, not to be spiritual is not to exist. So, I feel that my spiritual work was a way of existence above that which was normally called average. So I would bring the spirit out in a way that can be used and not, uh, not looked at as something uh, not, not part of everything. My question was more about... Uh insight into the spirit world how is the spirit world out there i'm still ah, here where i am now yes spirit world is amazing um you cannot imagine the unlimited information the unlimited uh, things that are, are available mm, what, are you, what are you engaged in now what are your um, occupations I have no occupations, but I am learning many things. I am now very interested in uh, the quantum areas of the universe and mechanics of this quantum part. And I see that uh, the energies are actually very similar to spiritual energies in some way. They transcend one another to become different as they move through the dimensions. Ah, right. Um, so you, you were very advanced spiritually in your life. Um, was it because of some angelic influences or about some extraterrestrial influences? Why were they, you were that talented? Well, it was God-given talent, but there were extraordinary circumstances in my youth and young adults that made me open my eyes to things differently. Also, I have a spiritual connection because the earth to me is not... Um, without, every part of the earth is not without spirit. And so therefore, you gain understanding of the spirit as you move forth. There were many things that happened with me that I could not explain in physical terms or in thought process that would translate into uh, logic. So therefore, it must be spiritual. Mm -hmm. So, were you an advanced extraterrestrial? I cannot tell you that I was extraterrestrial because I do not think I really was. At that time in existence, no one cared about extraterrestrial except those people in a very strange headspace, which I try to deal with in a very normal way to bring them into 
a positive understanding of what they experienced. And they were, yes, with extraterrestrials because the truth is the truth. But I tried to calm them into it to make them understand that this was part of the spiritual understanding of all things. So why did you do so many miracles and healing? What was your power? Where from did it come? I could, it was intuitive in some respects. I had psychic energy that could read the person well enough to treat them for what they really needed. And many others could not see the true problem. And I could. What was your connection with uh, Sigmund Freud? Freud? I thought that many of his processes, well, true. While being true, he over-expressed the sexual aspects a little too much uh, because he was more sexual, so his thought process made everyone more sexual. But there are those that are not, uh, would not fit into his diagnosis properly because he's overthinking that portion. Now, that to say that is also to say this. His psychic abilities also were high with the ability to see that there were many that were needing uh, to express themselves sexually that they could not do because of the way that the times were. It was a very um, prejudiced time against women in some way. So they were very not happy with how things worked. But men also were not happy because they had too much freedom and were too easily swayed. So it was a, a dichotomy of the system of this, the time period where women were cut off and men were too free. Um, my question is specifically, were you spiritually connected? Why Freud and you were two spirits that made a, so much influence on the humanity uh, in terms of spirituality? What spiritually, was we, are, we have similar energy which connects us, yes. The energy of the mind, the way that people think, the energy of connection of thought process is something we do have. And I connect to his thought processes, the way he writes them and speaks them very well. Now, from your perspective now as a spirit, um, do you confirm reincarnation? I confirm. Is it that simplistic that one life ends and then the soul goes into another life or is it more complex than that? It's more complex than that because you come to a place where you must review your life. You must look at the lessons that you missed or have gained. And this will tell you how your next life should be worked out and what lessons to include and to not include. Also, it tells you that um, you might want to spend some time in the afterlife working here for reasons. They might have something that they want you to learn or you may just be free to learn uh, different things. But right. then you decide to, together with, well, your soul is you, of course. I am my soul. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we, meaning I who have come from the soul and become a person, am no longer just a soul, but an, a, a, 
corporal being. So therefore, we decide together how things should be and what should happen. And sometimes that takes a while in the oversoul or heaven or whatever you want to call it to decide. Mm -hmm. Is it really sequential that one life has, has to end and then uh, the experience of that life joins the soul and then that combined being decides on the next life? Is it how it goes? Yes. It is how it goes, but it's more complex than that. But it, but it is still the same thought process. Is it many to many or one to one? Like one life ends or it has like many life ends and then it combined together multiple beings and then incarnate into multiple yes. lives. Multiple lives as you are one, but you are many in the sense that you have had many existences and they are all with you. And they all come with you everywhere you go. Uh, is it that the, the latest in the sequence of lies dominates the personality when it incarnates? Or is it are they all it equal? Wish, not necessarily. The, it is determined that sometimes the weakest of the lives should go back. Sometimes oh. it's determined that there is a need for a stronger life to go back, to work on these things and to uh, become something different than they were before. You see, there is a tendency to be similar in mm -hmm. all lives in some ways. Uh -huh. And so you try to get out of that similarities so that you may learn a greater amount. Wow. And, and so that is part of the determination. All right, suppose the weakest life, one of the weaker lives goes and incarnates. Does it have access to the experience of all other lives? It has that, it has access if it knows how to do so. If you know how to access past lives, then you can go to them all if you wish but most people would prefer not to do that but only to pick the lives that would be helpful in moving forward in this one how is it determined um, which experiences in, are incorporated in a new incarnation like is it like percentage that there is like 90 percent of that life and 90 percent of that oh, past yeah. life well it is that you do not really determine that. You, you put up what it is that the main theme of the life will determine. Mm -hmm. Then you have the lessons along the ways that you might want to learn, but always, unfailingly, you will not learn everything and things will not be exactly as planned. Mm -hmm. You do not know what peers or stimulus that you will run into that cannot all be controlled. So therefore you have some room for change and some room for uh, different lessons. Nice. Um, now, is it that one soul always incarnates as one soul? Is it possible to have multiple souls incarnating in one person? How frequently that, that, does it happen? Well, yes. It can happen that way, that uh, a soul decides to divide. But it is unusual that it's permitted. But okay. souls such as great men, who have many things to offer, may divide themselves at some point, but they all must come back as together as one eventually. Uh, how about many to one? Like many people combining into one soul, is it rare? Yes. I guess many souls into one incarnation is rare, right? Very rare. Mm -hmm. 
Now, is it, does it have to be sequential? Can I incarnate first in the future and then in the past? Is it permitted? Well, that is an interesting question because you have to be aware of what your past, present, and future entail, entail as far as uh, lessons are concerned. So therefore, yes, you can, because nows are interchangeable, if you understand me. Okay. But you must understand that if you go somewhere that is beyond your comprehension and become disconnected, your lessons will be much less. Uh-huh. So it's not prohibited completely, but it's rare, right? Yes. Say maybe like now I think maybe I should incarnate in the Egyptian times and go back. Is it of any possibility? Is it possible? Yes, but you would be incarnated in someone that has lived that life already. And so you must look at the past and see which life you may want to relive with them or outside of them or in a different way than them that will not change the way that the future is molded. Ah, so it's not that easy. Okay. I thought it was much easier. I just kind of could jump in the past and play with it. If you choose a, a life that had no meaning and did not cause any change. I see. Are you incarnated at the moment? No, I am not. I see. It makes it easier for me to do this kind of work. Nice. Uh, are you, are you engaged? What, what do you do these days? I am working on quantum mechanics and quantum physics. Got it. Got it. Nice. Thank you. Um, can you invite the next speaker? Um, I, I, I would love.